Hello, my name is Gabe, and I have another book review for you today. The Living Sea of Waking Dreams by Richard Flanagan. Okay, so it seems through some weird way I'm getting kind of a sense of themes to the books I'm reading. Purely coincidental, but I thought it'd be fun to point out. I had previously reviewed a book about death from the perspective of the dying. That is to say, the characters in the last book I reviewed knew they were going to die, and that affected their behavior. This is a book about the death from the perspective of the mourning, of the people who are losing a loved one. To that end, and as such a story often is, this story is dark, not happy, or a fun read. It's sad, dark, depressing, it's all those words, and it deals with some very, very big and, un not un and unfun concepts. Suicide, rape, death, and what comes with it. A heaping boatload of uh, mental health issues are discussed in this book. I want that out of the way so that so that we understand where we stand in this book. If you're looking for something fun and light, this is not the book for you. It's also worth noting that in order to review this book properly, I'm going to have to eventually spoil it. So I guess I'm going to be talking through things, but I'm going to try and save a lot of the big spoilery stuff towards the end of this review. But some stuff is still going to slip through. I believe that's fair to say. Okay, now that that's done and dealt with, how do I talk about this book? This book is, despite being pretty short, finished it in a week, touches on three topics. And I think to get a feel for this book, I need to talk individually about how the book handles each one. The three topics are death, the fact that the protagonist's mother is the protagonist Anna's mother is dying, which is probably the biggest and most reoccurring element in the book. Number two, the Anna's selfishness, and number three, the really weird dose of psychological horror they threw in there. I guess first off, I guess kind of a summary of the premise of the book though it really doesn't capture it at all. Anna's mother is dying, but she and her siblings have decided that they will do everything in their power to keep their mother alive, even if it's against her own wishes. But while that's happening, Anna's noticing that her... that body parts of hers are starting to disappear, on her, and they're also just other people, but for some reason, very few people seem to care. Alright. So, let's start with death. Now, before I get into how this book handles it, I'm just going to say it straight up, there is a lot more to this particular topic than I can cover here while still feeling happy with this video. So, hold that thought. I'm going to be talking more on this in a future date. What I can talk about now. It's basically stated that because they had already lost a sibling once, they did not want to lose their mother. Which is fair. So, they spend the entire book doing everything, they being Anna and her siblings, spend the entire book doing everything they can to keep their mother alive spending lots and lots of money. Though interestingly noted, they never really committed to spending much time with her when she was able to have visitors, but I will get back to that in a little bit. Ultimately, this element itself, the book handles really well. Like, 
it it captures the grief and how it feels to lose a loved one in a way that not many books I think can really get across. It makes a point to describe their mother getting worse and worse and worse in ways that make it clear that she is well past the point of recovery, which is important for a book like this one. If I were to say anything, I would say this is the element, and it's better because it's the thing that's pretty that's shown throughout the book, that it handles the most, the best. The second element, and I kind of touched on it already, Anna's selfishness. To say Anna is a selfish character, I think might be an understatement. Anna's a selfish character. It's made clearer and clearer that both as a mother and as a daughter, when it came to choosing between the interests of herself and her family and friends, she always chooses herself. To a kind of ridiculous degree. Like, and I'm going to just say this, her selfishness is unbelievable. Not that I'd say there aren't people that selfish, just it makes it hard to relate to her or really try and see her as a human being when she's so cartoonishly selfish. What I really mean when I say that is there are points in this book where she's asked to accommodate for people by doing things that are in no way an inconvenience for her, yet she refuses. Prevalent, and I guess there's a point to it, but, well, we'll get to more about that in a little bit. Next up, element three, psychological horror. As I mentioned, the main con the second concept that's advertised in this summary on this thing, the disappearing. So, body parts disappearing is unnerving enough on its own, but the fact that people just don't care is just downright creepy. Especially as it is established late on into the book, it's not in Anna's head. It's actually happening. With that being said, it's so out of focus in the book that I can't even really comment on it. What's there is written well, and I think having been moved to its own novel would have served it much better. But it's just so irrelevant that I can't help but feel that it's that it doesn't serve this story the, to any real degree. Alright, now to really get to my thoughts on this book, I'm going to have to talk about the ending. But before I do, uh, there are a few details I want to just nudge out of the way. Specifically, the book's formatting. I'm going to see if I can edit the page in, but... Along with chapter breaks, the book possesses these weird paragraph breaks. Why, I don't know. They're, especially at first, more distracting than helpful. And it's not like anything in the, the paragraphs in this book are in any major way really segmented from each other. If it were a scene break, like we're changing locations, I could see that as a stylistic choice. But as it is, it's just kind of weird. And also a huge waste of paper. Because you're getting like bulks of white space, meaning the book is cut in like half and is using way less paper than it should. Okay. I've delayed it long enough. Let's talk about the ending. I'm just going to say it as gently as possible. The ending is bad. It's horrible. For a myriad of reasons. At the end of this book, Anna dies. Just 
suddenly collapses without feeling a thing and dies. And, well, yeah, as an ending, that sucks. No, I want it clear, it's not that that doesn't work as an ending. It does. If the book it's the ending for fits. The problem is, this book, it doesn't. An ending needs to serve one of two purposes. Note, obviously, sometimes books are series or related to other stories, in which case, you know. But, generally speaking, it needs to serve one of two purposes. Number one, and the most common type of ending, progression from point A to point B. Throughout the entire book, our character was going from one way or another, or the scenario was going from one thing to another, and now we've finally arrived at another. We're done, and we've made a significant change. But Anna's selfishness is never resolved. She never really changes her point of view about life, or, life and death, and accepts her mother's decision. She is the same mean character she was at the beginning. So, her character has made no progress, and nothing's changed in the book world, except for everyone is missing a bunch of body parts. Alright, so what about Purpose 2? Glad you asked, even though. That? The second purpose of an ending is to make a point. And oftentimes, if a character dies doing something in their story, it's this ending they're going for. This story speaks in this point of view, in this I these ideas. Here's the point. This character didn't follow that, and they suffered for it. But therein lies the problem, what I just said. This book spends its entire runtime talking about how sometimes it's better to die in peace than live in pain. How for someone to suffer just so that they can live longer, that you need to accept death as part of the natural life cycle. Which is a fair message. But this ending doesn't work for it. And therein lies the biggest problem with the ending. If this book is saying that suffering in life is worse than dying in peace. And then Anna dying in peace before her mother means that she not only dies without feeling pain, she does so believing she's won. She's accomplished her goal throughout this book. It begs the question, what's the point? I have a theory, a suspicion. I have a theory, though I have no way of confirming it, and I'm not very well acquainted with the work of this author to know if this is a trend with them. I think this may have been two or three stories merged together. I say it for two reasons. A lot of times it seems the sections about Anna's selfishness and the sections about Anna trying to get her mother to live as long as possible are at odds with each other. I mean it. There is, there is in fact, to, to demonstrate this point, I'm going to tell you something that exactly happens near the end of this book. So, Anna is... Anna meets on a plane a girl, a, a lady who tells her about a bird sanctuary. So naturally, 
towards the end of the book, she decides to try and find some inner peace or some satisfaction to go to that bird sanctuary. Then the next chapter, she's with her mother. Then the chapter after that, she's at the bird sanctuary. And that's the final chapter of the book. It seems really weird to have that cliffhanger and then that scene. They don't go together. They don't transition. And honestly, the peaceful death ending could have worked for the selfishness. But the story told, it doesn't work. Okay. I've blabbed on and on about this or that. You heard me at this point. If I'm going to say it, I've said it. What am I even saying now? I don't even know. I think... The big takeaway from this book is... <laughs> endings really are the bow that ties things together. I think ultimately the ending did sour my appreciation for this book. Because it ended in a way that basically goes against the story being told... I feel like I wasted my time reading it. And that's where my feelings on this book are. But, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, do subscribe. But, more importantly than any of that, have a good night.